when do we need to use multi-stage rockets? If we look at the rocket equation, what we find out is that for a given <coughs> payload, specific impulse, and mass fraction, there is a speed limit that is the highest velocity that system can attain. If that velocity is not high enough to get into orbit, then we have to consider using multi-stage rockets, where each stage can achieve a lower delta V that's within the feasibility condition. And so what that allows us to do is after burning the propellant in the first stage, we can drop off the inert mass and continue with the upper stage to achieve the velocity we desire. I will explain this in more detail on the blackboard. For a given specific impulse and inert mass fraction, <coughs> using the rocket equation, we can find that there is a speed limit that that vehicle can attain. And that speed limit is given by this formula, where we have ISP times uh, the standard acceleration of gravity. And when you multiply these two numbers together, normally ISP is uh, in seconds, and we have, say, meters per second squared. This becomes meters per second. This is a velocity, or effective exhaust velocity, of the propulsion system. So we have a velocity times <coughs> a non-dimensional term, which is a logarithm, of 1 over the inert mass fraction. That's the fraction of inert mass divided by the inert mass plus <coughs> Uh, propellant uh, in the rocket. Uh, if this number is very small, then one over this number becomes large, and so this value can be a very high velocity. In fact, if we look at, you know, in the limit as F inert approaches zero, it would mean that there would be no speed limit at all. But in <coughs> actual rockets, the uh, inert mass fraction uh, is usually from 5 to 10 percent. In some particular cases, could be as low as 3 percent. So this is a number we can't get away from. And if we we're trying to increase the speed limit, we could ask ourselves, how small can we make this? 3 percent seems to be a practical limit. And 5 to 10 percent is more usual. If we ask, well, can we improve the specific impulse? Well, in this case, you know, if we used hydrogen locks, we could get over 400 seconds uh, of ISP, and that is about that limit. So if we use everything we can in the technology of the uh, chemistry of the propulsion and the, uh, the, the uh, structural mass being as minimal as possible, there will be a speed limit. And if this velocity is not sufficient to get into orbit, then we need to use multi-staging. So let's remember that the ideal rocket equation gives the total mass of the rocket. That's everything. That's payload plus inert mass plus propellant is a function of the payload, the delta V that you're asking for, the ISP, and the inert mass fraction. Similarly, the uh, propellant mass is dependent on the same terms that we see here, and so is the inert mass. So we see the functional relationship of total mass, propellant mass, and inert mass to, in particular, delta V ISP and F inert. If we find that our rocket is unable with its speed limit to achieve the velocity we're interested in, then we'll consider staging as follows. A staged rocket allows us to break the delta V into pieces. So for example, we could have one stage provide half of the delta V you need to get under the speed limit, and the second stage to provide uh, the other half. <clears throat> so let's consider a two-stage rocket 
with a, an upper and lower stage. And let's give the burden of the upper stage the problem of achieving a delta V up. I'll use a fraction here, F up, times delta V, where delta V is the total number. And so we could consider that this fractional value might be, say, around 50%. The velocity that we need from the lower stage, we'll write F low times the total delta V that we need, which would, you know, if this number is 50%, then this is the other 50%, because these two fractions, F upper stage plus F lower stage, of course, have to add up to 1. Now. We can consider the problem of minimizing the total rocket mass, where this is the total mass, and <clears throat> this is the fraction that we have uh, of the upper stage, for example. So one way we can view this is imagine that we have the upper stage. I'll just draw a sort of cartoon of our rocket. We have here the payload. And we can assume that there's some structural mass, some inert mass. Okay, So that's uh, M inert. And then we have the propellant inside. The upper stage will give us a certain delta V. Delta V up. Now, if we want to calculate what the lower stage does, we can imagine that we have now created a lower stage rocket. And now this part of the rocket, this is now the payload. The entire upper stage is payload. And we use this number in our formula up here, along with the delta V that we need, the ISP and the F inert of the lower stage to give us a total mass for the entire rocket. So we'll call that MI total. So if we want to make a plot now of what the total is, let's consider that we've picked 50% for F up. We could do this calculation that we talked about, first calculating this stage mass, and then using this is the payload mass, computing this stage mass and the total, and we get that value, and let's say here's the value. If the ISP and inert mass of the lower stage is different from the ISP and inertial mass uh, of the upper stage, then 50% may not be the best answer. And so we can do another calculation where we have split the delta V up uh, into uh, a different proportion for the upper and lower stage. So we can change these two values uh, ranging from, say, about 0 0.1 to 0 0.9. If, for example, F up of 0.4 gives a lower value, then we can plot it like this. And so we can do this calculation for a number of points and end up with a curve that looks like this. This is a curve of the total mass where we're looking at fractional value that the upper stage is taking care of, the remainder being taken care of by the lower stage, and to find the minimum, we just look at the low point on this curve. That's the minimum mass of the total vehicle. And very often, that is also the minimum dollar cost.